Okay, so today we are going to be doing a book haul. I've acquired 10 new books since my last haul, which seems like a decent number, so we'll talk about the books that I have acquired since the last haul. But before we do the haul, an ad from Skillshare. Hello, I am a vampire. And yes, this is a real Transylvanian accent. But I'm here to talk to you today about Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes to help you to learn new skills and broaden your horizons, deepen the skills you already know. With an amazing community, Skillshare allows you to have real growth in a community of millions of other creators. Take me, for example. I have a passion for showing the life of a vampire, be it creeping through the woods or our true weaknesses is the light. So I've been taking this filmmaking from home, turn found footage into a compelling video taught by Penny Lane. Now my video production is through the roof. These courses have no ads, and they're constantly adding new classes for premium members a month. And the first 1,000 people to use the link in my description will get a free trial of premium membership. So go and click today. So first, I bought two books immediately after the last book haul. I took Dren on like a fun adventure day. We ended up at the mall. I bought him a toy, which felt like I deserved to have a toy too. <laughs> so we went to the bookstore for me. Um, and, and so I got 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea, which I've already read and reviewed on the channel. Um, I enjoyed it. It, it, was, um, it, was, it was cool. My dad read it too. And he especially found it fascinating how much this author uh, was able to see into the future and guess about what submarines would look like. Some of it he got super wrong, but most of it was impressively accurate. Uh, that was the thing that, I'm, that interested my dad the most in it, and then it was really good because he and I ended up then looking up, you know, what, what submarines looked like at this point in history when this book was written, which was fascinating. I, oh my goodness, very different from what we know today. Uh, so that was really fun. The story itself I had a generally good time with. Overall, it's not, you know, a new favorite or anything, but I enjoyed it a lot. I said I reviewed it, and then I just reviewed it. Sorry. So I bought this. I went to the bookstore and bought this. It was a book that I had not read yet. I was just perusing shelves and it caught my eye because I'm really into nautical stories. Um, and then I was specifically, I went into the bookstore looking for The Woman in White um, because a long time ago when I was first getting into classics, someone specifically said The Woman in White was one of their favorite stories. And I remember the way they described it sounded fascinating to me. And since then, I have looked for The Woman in White every time I've gone into a bookstore, and I have never been able to find it. So this time, I just asked them to order it for me. So they ordered a copy and had it sent to the store for me to pick up later. I have not read it yet, because after I got it and put a picture of it on Instagram, somebody commented and said that it was like the first mystery ever written. And mystery isn't a genre I like that much, so I've put it off. So if you, if you love this book, please hype it for me. Uh, because it's slipped down on my TBR since then. But I am still gonna read it because I bought it, so I'm gonna read it. Uh, next, I have All These Murmuring Bones, which I got halfway through and kind of sort of DNF'd. Um, I'll probably come back to it eventually. I just wasn't feeling it. So this is a book that I picked up specifically because uh, my friend Brittany loved it so much and nautical see stuff. It just, it seemed interesting. It's set in Ireland and it follows Irish mythology, I'm pretty sure. Um, and it, anyway, it follows this family that have struck a deal with the Mur, and in exchange, uh, well, they, they would get prosperity and safety on the sea, and in exchange they have to give up one of their children. Um, and, and they, the family is now not prospering because of a series of events. I don't want to give too much away. And our main character, um, her grandmother wants to restore the deal and it would cost her her freedom. And it, the idea, it's gothic in setup. Uh, it's following the mer mermaids and it, it, it's the setup of it suits me so well. Um, the way mermaids are described in this book, I love. I eat it 
up. Our main character is very passive because she's kind of been uh, manipulated and used so much. So she's just kind of uh, distanced herself from her emotions, which I, I really enjoyed reading about. It was, I'm not, I'm not used to reading a, such a passive character, but intentionally so. There's so many things that I liked about this book, but it's also written in this very, um, flowery way, and the pacing is extremely slow. So it's one of those books that I know I want to finish because there are elements that I was liking so much, but Ultimately, I picked up Pirate Latitudes instead, and I put this down. So I'll get back to it eventually. This is a haul. I'm doing a bad job. You're supposed to be quick with hauls, right? Okay, then I bought uh, The Jasmine Throne and The Bone Shard Daughter, which I talked about already in my TBR video last week. So keeping it, and I'm, I'm about to read both of these in July. I've probably, at the time you see this, no, I haven't started either of them yet. So for the Jasmine Throne, it's these two girls who team up to, uh, to take what they want. One of them is after vengeance, one is after freedom, and according to the back of the book, together they team up and set the empire ablaze. And then the Bone Shard Daughter, which is about, uh, an emperor's daughter, I think, who, has gotten a mysterious uh, sickness, which causes her to lose her memories, which I believe causes her to lose her birthright. And now she's fighting to get all that back to protect her kingdom. But in doing so, she has to uh, dip her toes into bone shard magic, which has some sort of stigma on it, as best I could understand. Um, both of these are being read in July, and both of which I'm really excited about. I also bought two more Joe Abercrombie books. I have Half a King and Red Country. Red Country is the final standalone that I have to read before I can go into his other trilogy, all set in the First Law world, uh, which I'm really excited about this, but I actually decided to put this on hold to read Half a King, because this one is about a man who, uh, I think he's the heir to a throne, and he doesn't necessarily want this throne, but he's still fighting to get it back, and in doing so, he has to become a pirate, as far as I can understand. So he's going to uh, sail the shattered seas, which is very tumultuous and very dangerous, but he is, he only has one hand, uh, so he can't hold a shield, he can't swing an axe the, the traditional way, and so he learns to, to, uh, fight to be on this sea and to be strong enough, uh, and I don't know, it, it sounds really interesting. This is Joe Abercrombie's first and only attempt at YA, um, which I've never read <laughs> an Abercrombie YA. I'm not sure how that'll work out, but I'm interested to see. It seems to be some of his less popular work, but I want to try it because it sounds piratey, but I'll be reading both of these soon. And finally, the last three books that I picked up as we were working on this, this Inside Publishing series that I announced um, in my last video, uh, I, I brought home three books from the publisher that we worked with. So first I have The Devil in Dark Water, which um, is by the same author who wrote The Seven and a Half Deaths of Evelyn Hardcastle, which was a book that I liked but I didn't love, um, but this one looks really interesting to me. So this takes place on a ship. They're crossing the sea uh, following a man who is is a detective who's being uh, who's being persecuted for a crime that he may or may not have committed, and then this voice comes from the sea that threatens to kill them all. Uh, it says, uh, promising three unholy miracles followed by a slaughter. First, an impossible pursuit. Second, an impossible theft. And third, an impossible murder. So anyway, they're trying to solve a mystery um, before this mysteri mysterious voice thing sinks the ship and kills them all. So it is kind of a mystery, kind of detective. We are following a detective, so it could potentially not work for me, but it is set at the sea, and maybe there's some sea monster trying to kill them all. So it could, it could be a hit, it could be a miss. I want to read it. And then I also got these two books, The Whispering Dead and The Caro Haunt by Darcy Coates, which is an author I've never read before. I already read, read The Whispering Deep and I didn't like it. There will be a review coming up 
soonish. Uh, but this is about a girl who, through a series of circumstances, ends up living in a cottage or staying in a cottage on a cemetery, and then she starts seeing ghosts because there are certain souls that haven't passed on because they have unfinished business here, and she's trying to help them out. And this one is about a woman who takes people into a haunted house, and everything seems to be going well until a murder happens. And then she realizes that the ghost of the person who used to own this house, a notorious serial killer, may actually still be around. So, um, like I said, I didn't love this one, but I do want to give her another try because there were things about this that I really liked. So I want to, I want to try some of her other stories and, uh, see if this is an author I could potentially enjoy because I really, I really enjoy hauntings, like ghosts and castles and, you know, gothic style uh, horror. Um, so I don't know. I'll try her out again. We'll see. Okay, so those are the books that I have bought in the last two months. Of the books that I haven't read yet, let me know. Have you read any of them? Are you planning on reading of them? Hype up the ones that you think that I should push to the top of my TBR. Uh, I post videos every Tuesday through Friday. I'll see you again soon. Bye.